its own. There you go. Yep. 10 o'clock on your Tuesday morning. Welcome in. It is the Garnet Trust Hour. Tyler Head and Chris Clark along with you here in the Herndon Chevrolet Studios. Happy to be joined by Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Basketball. Jacoby, appreciate your uh, time this morning. Uh, your radio debut, as we were talking about a few minutes ago. I yeah. think we've had every other member of the team in here. I think you're like the last one. Last but not least, man. Last but not least. Yeah, we're we're thrilled to have you in here. Thanks for taking time out to do this. And you've been you've been busy actually uh, around Gamecock country. You were in Lancaster last night, mm -hmm. or Fort Lawn, South Carolina, more accurately, uh, at the Catawba Fish Camp for the Welcome Home Tour with uh, BJ Mack, one yep. of your uh, teammates last season. Uh, we were there till late last night, so even more appreciate you coming out here and doing this early morning. Uh, how how was it, by the way, interacting with all the fans? I know y'all there are a lot of people there. Yeah, man, it was a really good event. Um, me and BJ went out there, took a lot of pictures, signed some things for the fans. It's, it's always good just interacting with them and, you know, just giving back the same way they come and support us. You know, I just, I'm very appreciative for all of them. I learned this morning I've been mispronouncing the name of that town mm -hmm. this entire time. It's not Lancaster, yeah. it's Lancaster. Yeah, Lancaster. I'm, I'm yeah. learning. I'm trying my best. I've heard a few different ways, but I say Lancaster. So yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's accurate. But you you're from that area, so I, we will go with we will go with what you say um, for sure. I, Tony Annan, the uh, men's soccer coach, was there last night. Tyler, he's a regular, obviously here on the game, and uh -huh. you know, he had his his British accent, you know, <laughs> talking about things, and he said. Lancaster, I think is what it was, <laughs> but, um, you know, Lancaster. So we'll have to, we'll have to teach him too. But, uh, Jacoby, what, what have you seen? You mentioned the support of the Gamecock fan base, especially since y'all had the season that you did, um, had the tournament, you know, made it to the tournament for the first time in several years. What have you seen the reaction of Gamecock Nation? What types of things did you hear last night and, and since y'all did that? Man, a lot of people just say it was fun watching this past team. It was just, the games were fun and, you know, coming from a player's perspective, I can say the energy was incredible this year, and it, it really helped us uh, in many games, just give us yeah. an extra boost of energy, you know, help us go on some runs. Uh, you know, it, it's a big difference in a, in a game. So a lot of people may not realize how much of a difference they make, but our fans made a, a really big difference for us this year. Yeah. So, so every team before the season obviously is going to believe that they're going to go out there and win every game and make a deep run in the tournament and all that kind of stuff. Once you actually get in the grind of the season, you start to figure out how good your team is. At, at what point did you guys, I guess, really confirm to yourself, like, we are as good as we think we are and we know the season can be special? Yeah, like you said, man, before the season we had uh, a different type of confidence going into it. But uh, I would say just after we won a few big games in the SEC, even before that, maybe like even in the Arizona tournament, we kind of clicked in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we beat once we beat Kentucky, beat Tennessee, we really were like, okay, we're, we're doing something now. But I feel like we had that confidence going into it. Yeah, that, it was so interesting, the difference between, I was thinking about this before the show, between last season and this season. And, you know, you were one of the guys that had the perspective 
to have been on both of those teams. You know, yeah. got guys like BJ and Talon and Steven, like they didn't, but you and Michi and some others did. Um, like, what do you think was the biggest difference? Um, this team really just had a more a feel of togetherness, uh, chemistry. You know, we went to the Bahamas before the season and kind of got some games in down there, mm -hmm. just spent time with each other. I think that made a little difference in chemistry. And then, I don't know, man, we just had some new guys with different play styles, and I just feel like it clicked more. And, you know, those new guys that came in, mixed with the guys that stayed, it just, I don't know, it just was like a work of magic. So, mm -hmm. man, it's just it just clicked for us. Honestly. So that Bahamas trip gets brought up a lot. Lamont Paris talked about it a lot throughout the season. And obviously, we know you guys are out there, you know, playing basketball. You're out there kind of being able to enjoy yourselves vacation a little bit as well. Like, like what about that trip created so much chemistry within this team before the season started? Man, it's tough because, you know, we only played two games out there. So some people may be like, oh, that's not, that doesn't do too much for you. But it just allows you to kind of see stuff against a different team when in the summer you're playing against each other. So it's hard to see and make adjustments like in the game so I feel like we just kind of started to see okay he plays like this against other people and just kind of start to learn each other and then, as well as spending time off the court uh, just walking around having fun relaxing together talking to each other uh, all that makes it just a little bit of a difference in the, in the game going down the rest of the season Let, let's ask you and this may be a I don't know if it's a tougher question maybe a little bit of a sore subject but obviously it was a great great thing to make it to the tournament but now that y'all have gotten through the tournament played that game against Oregon in the first round um like how, how do you look back at that game now that it's over is it like man like it's it tough because <laughs> once you get to that point one game and you're, you're done yeah uh, so it goes by quick that game went by so fast for me but right now for me I just look at it like I didn't get enough of that feeling it was right. kind of too quick for me. So it's just a lot of motivation to get back to that point and make a run in there. And, uh, you know, it's something to learn from. You know, it's only one game, but uh, I learned so much from it. I feel like I can use that experience next year as, long as, as well as the other guys that were in there. So. And how different is that experience of being in the tournament going through, you know, to traveling up there to Pittsburgh, going through the media stuff the day before, and, you know, taking on a team in Oregon on that kind of stage for the first time? Like, what is that experience like compared to, you know, a regular season game or even something like the SEC tournament? Yeah, a lot more goes into it. Um, it's a lot more that we do before the game than we do a regular game. A lot more practicing. We probably practice like three times before that. Um, a lot more media before the game. Uh, you're somewhere you probably haven't been. It's just a different kind of atmosphere and vibe, a gym you've never played in. But that goes for both teams, so it's just a crazy experience. Uh, you see the March Madness everywhere on the court. It's surreal. It's a dream come true to a kid. But, yeah, it's just a lot more that goes into it beforehand. But the game itself is still the same. What did Lamont Paris say to you guys after that game? You know, you get in the locker room. Y'all had a lot of fun moments you know during the season i mean we saw it all on social media like he's coming in dancing and things like yeah. that and y'all got to do that a lot more than the opposite right because y'all won yeah. so many games this year but what what was that vibe and atmosphere like and, and what were his words to you um mainly it was just you know yeah we lost um that's tough you know that's kind of what was on our minds at the time but he just kind of wanted to remind us how much we did accomplish this year how successful we were uh and that this team is you know a start of something special like this is this team was the foundation for what's to come in the, right. in the future years and you know he was just thankful for us and you know he just kind of went over that and just told us like we we actually made history this year we did some things that have never been done so be proud of that although we lost and yeah, it's something for the people that still be here mm -hmm. to build on and thank you to the guys that won't be here anymore and it's hard to look back immediately after losing that game and getting eliminated from the tournament, but how long until the kind of the reality of what you guys were able to accomplish over the course of this season really started to set in? Like, man, I know it sucks that we got eliminated in the first round, but, man, this season was special. I would say a few days. You know, that there's a lot of emotion behind the season, man. We worked every day to get to that point and play every game to get to that point. So for us to lose, it was really emotional. I'd probably say it stuck on guys for a few days, but after that, um, it kind of kicked back in that we did something special regardless of how we lost. You know, something that we were talking about before we came in, Jacoby, was, you know, and I think it goes back to, like, one reason 
that this team ended up being so good is the guys that you did bring in to add to the pieces like yourself that were already on the team. Number one, they'd played a lot of ball, right? Like, yeah. Talon had played, like, 150 games before he even got here. And, you know, BJ and Steven, all, all the guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, they're also, like, really unique players, I feel like. Yeah. Can, can you speak to that a little bit, just, like, the different skill sets they brought? Yeah. Uh, and I'll just say, like, all those guys really contributed to our offense. So we got Talon Cooper, uh, ball-dominant guy. Handles the ball well, takes care of the ball, really good point guard, really good leader. So he was kind of a, a huge piece for us. You got B.J. Mack, came from Wofford. Uh, kind of undersized big guy, can stretch the floor, though. Like, I would say he might be the most key piece to what we did this year offensively just because he brings so much space to our team. He can shoot the ball well, and he can also play inside. So mm-hmm. he kind of a mismatch problem. Uh, bigger guys he'll bring to the perimeter, but if you're too small, he'll post you up. So... He, let, he allowed us to do many different things with our offense in many different scenarios. And then uh, you got Miles Stute from Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. stretch the floor, does a little bit of everything offensively, can attack, can shoot, space in the floor. You know, we just had a lot of floor spacing. And then Stephen Clark, he played a good, big piece for us as well this year. So, you know, just with all those guys, we, we found a way for it to click, mm-hmm. and, and Coach put it all together. So you got to give him credit for that. So Studdy was somebody that you were obviously familiar with, you know, from being at Vanderbilt the, the season prior. The other guys, you know, Cooper, Mac, how familiar with were you with them before they came here? Uh, I've played kind of with BJ before. Uh, I, I kind of knew how he played more. Talon was really the only one that I hadn't played with or seen too much of, but it was it didn't take us long to click at all. You know, we played really good together. So all those guys, we clicked really fast. It was no problems with that. So here's a, a fascinating question. I don't know if anybody knows the answer to how do you replace those guys? I mean, because the portal's open, right? High school recruiting's still going. You got some pieces coming in. Got some guys who will continue to improve, but um, it's going to be pretty hard to replace those guys, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's it's challenging just because you, like you said, for this last team, we fit really well. Mm. So we're going to try to, I feel like, keep that same model, same make of the team. But to to find that right now, it's a lot of guys in the portal and stuff. It's, I'm sure it's tough on the coaches to yeah. try to find the, the right pieces, but I, f- I got good faith in them that we'll find the right pieces to bring in and help this team get back to where we were. Here's one idea. So I, I think what you said about BJ was interesting in that maybe I, I have a hard time saying, all right, what was the key piece? And I always land on they're just they were all important, right? right? Like everybody's sure. role yeah. was important. But what about CMB becoming kind of playing a little bit of more of a BJ role, like mm-hmm. stepping out, being able to hit some yeah. threes, because we know he can do that, right? Yeah, so when he first came in uh, in the summer last year, man, he hit, he hit a lot of threes. Uh, he was stretching the floor. So, man, if he if he gets back to that, I don't see how many people could guard him. You yeah. know, he's already un, almost unstoppable going <laughs> to the rim. So uh, if he gets a jump shot, uh, well, good luck to anybody <laughs> guarding him. Honestly, he's a he's going to be a pro. So Yeah. Now, why do you think LeBron Pierce maybe held him back from doing that once he did start playing this season? Um, I don't want to say he held him back. You know, he went through some things at the beginning of the year that kind of hindered his his jump shot a little bit from what it was. And then uh, I think Coach just wanted him to just go to his strongest suit, which at the time was going to the rim and just making plays, making decisions, going in the paint. So I think that's just what he was best at at the time and for what the team needed. That's what we needed him to do. And he did that really well. So now it's just about expanding and getting that back to what he was. Is the Garden Trust Tower, Tyler Head and Chris Clark hanging out with Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Men's Basketball. We'll have more coming up here on the Garden Trust Tower on the game. <clears throat> I 
Our friends at Integrated Media can help bring your home into the modern age by putting your home systems at your fingertips. They install smart home systems right here in the Midlands and utilizing your smartphone. Our friends at Integrated Media can help you control everything in your home, lighting, thermostat, sound systems, TVs, and your security cameras and alarm systems. You can impress your guest with preset lighting themes that you can change at the touch of a button. If it's too hot or if it's too cold in your home, you can adjust your thermostat without leaving the couch. They can help you do that and so much more. Give them a call, 803-948-8327, or visit their website, integratedmediainc.com. That's Michael and Nathan. They've been to my home. They've been to West Mitchell's home. They can come out of your home or business as well and help take your home to the next level. Integratedmediainc.com. Check them out on Instagram and Facebook at Integrated Media Columbia or 803-948-8327. Yeah, you got it all. Okay. This is Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Men's Basketball. You're listening to the home of Gamecocks 107.5 The Game. Is that good? Here, read it one more time. Yes. This is Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Men's Basketball. You're listening to the home of the Gamecocks 107.5 The Game. Welcome back in. It is the Garner Trust Hour here on the game. Tyler Head, Chris Clark along with you. Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Men's, men ba men's Basketball hanging out with us on today's edition of the show. Real quick reminder, as I mentioned in the last hour, big announcement coming up tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock on the early game with Bill and Preston. Going to want to tune in for that. It is a very, 
very big deal. I will just leave it at that. Again, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, right here on the game. Uh, Jacoby, I want to back up a little bit here. You have the rare, you know, uh, um, I'd say insight of somebody that's been through the change of going from Frank Martin to Lamont Paris as the head coach here at South Carolina. Uh, from your perspective, what was that like? Not only, you know, here's the coach that brought you in here that's now being let go, and now here's somebody that you probably didn't really know a whole lot about, Lamont Paris coming over from UT Chattanooga. What was that process like, and how What was? How did you buy into Lamont Paris, I guess is the best way to ask this, once he came in here? Yeah, so uh, them letting go of my coach that brought me into college was tough on me as a young guy. Um, I had to do a lot of decision-making and I had a lot of things to figure out, but my family and everybody helped me make the decision that I felt was best for me. And then when Coach Paris came in, I just wanted to get take time to just learn him, uh, see what he was about. And then, you know, I did some research on him. I saw that he was he he won everywhere he's been. And my biggest goal in college was to just is to just win. So uh, I feel like we had some similar goals. And he told me he believed in me as a player, and I believe in him as a coach. And I feel like I made the best decision. And how hard going through that first season where you guys lost a lot of games and it was tough, you know, taking on the likes of Tennessee and A&M teams that were beating you guys pretty badly to mm -hmm. say, okay, your number one was rough, your number two is going to be better. Like, how hard is it to believe that after going through a tough year like that? Yeah, man, you know, it's you kind of have to give it the benefit of the doubt. You know, it's tough coming in first year and just turning something around or being really good. And so you just kind of got to believe what he said and, you know, see who he's bringing in. And I just always believed in what he does and his system. You know, his system leads to winning. And it's worked out for us. Did, Absolutely. Did y'all Did y'all maybe some of the, of course, th that year was, you know, like you said, more challenging. But there were some maybe like signs of life isn't the right way to say it. But like s there were a couple nights like I know the Alabama game, mm -hmm. you know, was tough because you didn't end up winning. But like. Y'all went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama. They were the number one seed in the tournament that year. You know, Brandon Miller, y'all beat Kentucky, right? Like, did that help? Like, okay, th this can work if we just keep it going. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was saying about the system. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw it was working. I just think once we got these the guys in that we needed in his system that mm -hmm. fits what he's trying to do, that's what helped us kind of take it over the edge. But like you said, we played Bama close in overtime. We had a few more games that were close that we just didn't pull out at the end. So just seeing that, I was like, okay, we get we get what we need in here. We'll we'll be all right. Another one of your teammates on that team that's not on this year's team is is Gigi Jackson. And man, I, I've been talking, texting with a lot of people. Gigi's doing his thing in the man, NBA. He's killing it right uh, now. How, how about that? Man, I, I just I'm happy to see it, man. He he's great. He's gonna be great. He's killing it right now, and it's his first year, so. You know, in the future, he'll he'll really be good. And his interviews are hilarious. I mean, I don't know if he's every single night he's got some quote that's going viral. Because, but it is cool because you see him like you, you go on Twitter, you watch a game, and like, he's standing beside LeBron James, yeah, like, it's guarding crazy. guarding LeBron, putting moves on the Lakers. Like it's 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 pretty fun to man, watch. I, I just love to see him. I love watching him. Yeah, I just hope he keeps getting better. Yeah, I, I want to just see him do as good as he possibly can. So, so he was somebody that was obviously very highly touted when he came in as a freshman a season ago. When you get on the court with him, like, can you see that difference immediately? Like, oh man, this guy's special. There's something different about him. Yeah, you can. You play a few possessions with him. You can tell he's a pro. You know, he has a pro build, six nine. He can dribble. He can shoot. So, a lot of guys that height can't really do that. So, you can tell he's special when you play with him. So. Is C and B the same way? Like you said earlier, like he's a pro. I know he's not a same player as Gigi, mm -hmm. but like I remember we had, I think it was BJ in here, and this is before y'all had played a single game this season. And like we asked him about call, and he starts BJ the smile, you know, and yeah. all that stuff. And he's like, oh yeah, like he can do some things. But do, do you see some of those same traits in them? Yeah, I see the same thing. You know, those guys coming out of high school are, you know, pretty high ranked and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So. You can you can kind of tell just being a basketball player playing with different guys for a long time. You can tell who who's a little different uh, when you play with them. And like we said, we played a whole summer with Colin before anybody else saw him touch the court. So mm -hmm. he's also a huge six nine, strong. So he has he has a lot of pro uh, attributes to him as well. So so both those guys obviously you know from South Carolina like you are. 
from your perspective, what is the talent in this state like? I know people may not talk about South Carolina a whole lot from the grand scheme of things. People talk about Georgia and Texas and California and places like that, but so much good talent comes from this state. Why do you think that is? I don't know why that is, but I do know we have a lot of talent come from here. Uh, you know, I play with a lot of guys. I feel like myself, I'm pretty good myself. So, <laughs> you know, we just it's a lot of a lot of a lot of talent from South Carolina. I don't know why it's we're so underrated or swept under the rug, but that's all right. We'll keep doing what we do best. Yeah, and start, starting to, I think, you know, make make some moves in terms of keeping more more, more guys uh, in, in the state. Um, let, let's go to your game since you brought that up. You know, it's pretty easy to see your progression as a player from, you know, last season to this season. Um, what do you feel like were the biggest areas where you got better and improved? The biggest thing for me is just – I'm more comfortable, like, the experience mm -hmm. um, being out there. I've played pretty good minutes every year I've been in college, so just continuing to just work on my shooting. Uh, I take pride on defense. You know, I think that's something that separates me as well, just being solid on defense, guarding my man. Um, I had a pretty good assist-to-turnover ratio this mm -hmm. year, three, three assists to one turnover, so I don't know, man, just... I'm just a solid guy. I like to be good in many areas, uh, but I'm trying to really keep continue working on my shooting. Yeah, that that was an area I was going to bring up, like the three point shooting and your willingness to take it too. Like yeah. you, you did not shy away from taking three pointers this year, and obviously did a great job there. What's the one thing? And you've mentioned Coach Paris's system a few times. What's the thing where like you're not going to play for Lamont if you can't do this thing? Like, is it defense? Would you say? Yep. Uh, defense and then having confidence so that's the two things uh, he's really different in coaching when you know he tells guys to shoot a lot of the time a lot of coaches probably wouldn't do that so just instilling confidence in guys allowing people to play free and then if you can't guard anybody it's hard to be on the court uh, especially in the crunch time so with, with me taking pride in defense I feel like I it helps me play for Coach Paris, yeah. So, Coach Paris, being a defensive-minded coach, you guys play at a very slow pace. That's something we talked about going into each and every game, how frustrating that is for opponents. Do you like that slow style of play? Would you prefer something a little more, more up-tempo, or have you just mm. kind of adapted to what you guys do? I wouldn't say I want something more fat, like faster. Um, I like the system we're in. You know, we still get the shots we want. And the best thing about how we play slow is – we get good shots, and that allows you to be more efficient. So for me, I kind of like it in that way. Is it hard to be patient with that kind of tempo of offense sometimes where you maybe want to go a little bit quicker? I wouldn't say it's hard because our coaches tell us if you see something, go, you know. But we just have a lot of guys that are unselfish and want to wait and get the better shot when we probably could go and take a shot that might go in, might not. But... Um, I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just you just got to have the right guys that all are on the same page and want to get the best available shot every play. So another defensive item that I wanted to get to is y'all played the one three one. Y'all would bust that out. And, I mean, honestly, man, sometimes, Jacoby, when y'all would play the one three one, some people acted like they hadn't played basketball before. Like yeah. it seemed to mess people up. What what was the um, the genesis of that? Like when – when did Le when did Lamont bring it to y'all and say, "Hey, we're going and, and start teaching it and really bring it along"? Uh, we work on it pretty early, yeah, um, because it's just it's so effective against some teams, and you know I don't want to give the sauce away. In case <laughs> yeah, any, sure, sure. Anybody else sees this, <laughs> but it's just it's a real good wrinkle when you need it sometimes in the game when man may not be working or we might just be down and right. need, need to get a few stops and throw the team off, and it usually works. Most of the time I've done it, it's worked so. It's a really good defense, and then we got guys like Zach Davis, who we put up top, long, athletic, and he really causes problems in the one through one So, yeah, it's just a really good wrinkle for us to have, a really good weapon to pull out sometimes when teams don't expect it and may not have worked on it. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to go to next was Zach, and then, but as I think about it, like, really the, the body types that you, you guys all had, like, ability to guard multiple positions, mm -hmm. like BJ, yourself, Miles, you know, can guard multiple positions, Zach, obviously – like, I, I feel like that all worked together. But, man, it, that's tough. When you got Zach playing at the top of that 1-3-1, yeah. his length, I mean, very disruptive. What's the next step for him, you think? Because, again, we, we all talked about the transfers all year, but I always go back to, yeah, the transfers, but also you and Zach and y'all's growth from year to year were was significant, you know. But what do you feel like the next step is for him? 
Yeah, man, shout out to Zach, uh, another guy from South Carolina. But uh, for him, man, just to continue to grow offensively, you know, the thing with him kind of like me is he always brings effort on defense, and that's the biggest thing defensively. And he also comes with a lot of length, and he's 6'9", so he bothers guys naturally just with his body type. But for him, just to keep working, expanding the offensive game, you know, dribbling, shooting, just working on everything, uh, offense, you know, defense kind of comes to him, and he's gotten really better at slashing and just he does that naturally. You know, every game he's gonna get some points off of offensive rebound, putbacks, uh, backdoor cuts. He does all that better than anybody I've seen. So, just to continue growing in other offensive areas, he'll be he'll be really good. We'll have more Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Men's Basketball as the Garner Trust Hour rolls on here on your Tuesday on the game. If you have not had the new barbecue Cuban sub from Firehouse Subs, go check it out. It's back for a limited time only. If you're a longtime Firehouse Subs fan like me, you may remember it from the past. So you can go check it out again. Or if you've never had it before, you can check it out now. Again, limited time only. It features slow smoked pulled pork, honey ham, melted Swiss, golden mustard barbecue sauce, chipotle slaw, and spicy pickle chips to top it all off. And it's all in a toasted sub roll. Southern Roots with a Cuban twist. That's the barbecue Cuban sub. You can get it at all 12, all 14 rather, Midlands Firehouse Subs locations. And I'll tell you, if you want dinner tonight, you can redeem half off your entire order after 6 p.m. when you order on the Firehouse Subs app or online only. That's firehousesubs.com. Or you can download the app, find the closest location near you. And when you order online only, you can get half off your entire order after 6 p.m. Firehousesubs.com or the Firehouse Subs app.
Welcome back in. It is the Garnet Trust Hour. Tower head Chris Clark hanging out with Jacoby Wright from Gamecock Men's Basketball on your Tuesday morning. Uh, Jacoby, going into your fourth year now, uh, this upcoming season, you'll be looked at as one of the the senior leaders on this team. What kind of role is that going to be for you? Like, like how does your role change now being looked at as one of the veterans on this team going into this upcoming season? Yeah, you know, I kind of started leading last year in a way or helping lead. Um, but this year, being an actual senior, you know, I got to really help everybody and help the young guys come along that's going to have to give us some minutes and just just lead in every aspect of the team. So, I, you know, I'm excited for it. I love doing it. So it shouldn't be too hard for me to get do that. When you uh, look back at this season, we were talking about this before the show a little bit. Is there a win that's maybe most meaningful to you or like a fa- even maybe not even just a win, like a favorite moment of the season? Yeah, I had two. Uh, one, like we said earlier, just being in March Madness. Yeah. It's like a, a kid's dream come true. Used to watch it on TV, and now I was a part of it. So that was big for me. And then a big moment was uh, the court storming yeah. at home. That was epic for me. Uh, the only one I've been a part of. You might might not be another one. So <laughs> just because, you know, we might we not be the, might not be the underdog team anymore. Oh, there you so go. So we might be the team that people storm the court on now. So <laughs> that's the goal at least. So. Uh, that was a big moment for me, though. You know, my mom came on the court. It was just crazy, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's fun stuff. That, so you mentioned the underdog card. Like, uh, y'all were able to play that card this year, right? Like, did y'all talk about that a lot? Yeah. Um, we, uh, you know, we they started, they put us last in the conference. Yeah. And if that's oh. not enough motivation in itself, <laughs> I don't know what else you need. But. We, t- we talked about that plenty. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. Lamont's like, Either either I stink or y'all stink or both. Or you both. Know? So, <laughs> so but, obviously not. You but know. you know, we as soon as we saw that, we we knew we weren't last in the conference. Like, we that was kind of crazy. But um, yeah, that's all the motivation we needed. Every game, it was a team, especially in conference, was a team that they put in front of us. So it wasn't hard for us to go out there, and give it all we had, and have a chip on our shoulder. Now, even when you guys did start to win some games in the conference, from a national standpoint, you guys weren't garnering a lot of attention. Is that something you were still paying attention to? Like, hey, they're not talking about us, we're not getting ranked, or, Mm -hmm. you know, do do you try and put on blinders to some degree and just kind of focus on the task at hand? I feel like Coach wanted us not to pay attention to that stuff, but it's kind of, in today's world, it's hard not to, especially when we feel like we're handling business and not getting rewarded for it. You know, we feel like we should have been ranked a lot faster than what we were. I, I can't find the list right here in front of me in real time, but Tyler, did you see that? There, there was a list. I'm, I'm trying to give Jacoby some more motivation for next year. So there was a list of SEC basketball coaches. Yes, I did through, see that. One through, I guess one through 16 because they were uh, including Texas and Oklahoma. I think they put yep. Lamont at 14. Crazy. I guess I guess he didn't do enough this so, year. There's your bulletin board, Bazario. Yeah. I, don't see how, I don't see how <laughs> Coach Perez is not a top five coach. You know, there's some really good coaches in the conference. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. not saying that, but he we ranked the man last, and we came <laughs> tied for second. So I don't I, see how you couldn't put him up there. But <laughs> I feel like if you get SEC Coach of the Year, that might should probably like move exactly. you up a little bit on the. But you know, what do I know? Maybe, maybe hey, not. You know, just keep giving us motivation. <laughs> I'd rather be have that and yeah. give us a reason to play than us lacking the motivation. That's right. So Chris mentioned the conference obviously expanding with Texas and Oklahoma coming in. Obviously coming from. Another great basketball conference like the Big 12. Well, what are your thoughts on? And we don't know what the schedule is going to look like, obviously, but you know, potentially encountering those two teams now. I, mean, I love it, man. It's just more competition for us, and it's a good thing for our conference. And it should it just, just it should be fun, man. We're going to treat them like any other teams we play. Treat all the teams with the same respect, but it'll just be fun having two two different teams in there, two different teams we can play, new faces. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes this year. Who is the best? You, you can answer this for this season or even, like, your entire college or high school career because I, I know, like, in high school you played against some really mm-hmm. good players yeah. and with, same thing, obviously, being here at South Carolina. Who's the, the toughest player you've played against? Can you think of one? Yeah. Um, probably in high school I played Zion Williamson. He was pretty – that's a good one. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best player I've no, played. Another uh, high-caliber guy from the state of South Carolina. There you right. go. Uh, yeah, he's probably the best player I've played, I think. Uh, that, just this year, I had to give it to hmm, probably uh, Don Connett. That's who I was going to He's pretty yeah. good. Not that I played him. Really I have no good, chance. Really good. But like, he, I figured you were going to say him. I'll tell you, man, I, I was impressed with uh, my guy from Florida, Walter Clayton, too. I mean, Yeah, he's, he's good, too. 
Yeah, he yeah. can shoot. He can yeah. shoot really good. He he gave us some problems, but we got we he, came out on top. He's one of the only guys that could somewhat bust the three the the one three one because he's like mm-hmm. I'll just shoot it from yeah. way out here and probably probably make it. But yeah, he he was really yeah, he's good. a really good player. Dalton Connect, one of those just really really unique guys. I mean, just yeah, he can do so many things. I was just gonna say that he he scores in all three levels. That's kind of the toughest guys to stop, and he's really really good at it. So. I mean, we didn't do the worst job on him. I feel like I got anybody, but he's really good. Most important question of the hour, how do you rate Coach Paris's dancing? I give it 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? <laughs> yeah, especially after a good win. There's nothing like it. Even if it's bad after a good win, Even it's, still, if it's, bad it's still good. Even if it's bad after a good win, it's you know, still good. It's fun. It's fun, yeah. It, so, and Coach Paris, he likes to throw the dad jokes in there. Is that like a commonplace thing in practice and stuff too? Kind of like roll your eyes, or are you just kind of used to it at this point? Man, you know he he throws his jokes in there. We just all, if we don't think it's funny, we laugh anyway. He, <laughs> but nah, he's a he's funny man. He he makes he brings a little joy to the team here with his jokes. It's, it's now, always fun. <laughs> he he boasts a lot about his mac and cheese making abilities. Have you tried this yet? No, nah, I haven't tried any of his food yet, man. I need he need to. He cooked me up a plate one day or <laughs> cook up for a team. He actually uh, did get on the grill one day, though. Uh, oh. I think it might have been might have been 4th of July. Okay. It was really good, though. He did a really good job. What, what was on the what was on the menu? He was making some burgers and hot dogs, oh. I believe. But, yeah, it was really good. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Might need to have a, pa- a party at there Lamont's go. house. Yeah. A little, little fundraiser or something like that. Something That'd be like good. That, yeah. Let, let's talk about, um, speaking of kind of fundraising-centric, so last night – we were talking about how you went over to the Welcome Home Tour and you were mm-hmm. there on behalf of Garnet Trust. You're here on, on the Garnet Trust Hour here on the game. So how has it been, you know, being able to participate in the NIL landscape in college athletics and how's it been, you know, working with the folks at Garnet Trust? Man, it's it's a blessing for me, man. I'm extremely thankful for Garnet Trust and, you know, just for NIL in general, man, it's, it allows for you to prepare yourself for the real world and support yourself and your family so man i feel like for just speaking for all players man i'm extre- extremely thankful for nil being passed and i'm extremely thankful for garnet trust you know being a part of my life and helping me in my college career mm-hmm. so you came in as nil was just becoming a thing in your three years in college how much have you seen it evolve from your perspective and you know where, where do you th- what do you think the future of it is as it continues to change and more more and more rules continue to change and it opens up more and more it's, it's really expanding uh right now uh i don't know where it's going in the future it's getting pretty crazy between uh recruiting the portal and you know just you know it's getting crazy so i don't know what is to change in the future but this guy's out here making a lot of money <laughs> and, uh, different sports and stuff, but uh, man, it's it's good though. It's a good thing. It, it has its, everything has its gifts and its curses. So, how do you handle? And not to get you know too personal, obviously, with anything, but like, how do you handle you know being able? Same as if you had you know a job. Y- y'all are in college. Y'all are college athletes, mm-hmm. high level. You don't have time to get a job, you know, for the most part. Uh, but you're able to capitalize on NIL. So, how do you look at it strategically? Of you know being able to save money and when to spend money and when to not, like just the financial planning part of it? Uh, it's tough. I mean, a lot of guys, honestly, we're young guys, man. College athletes are 18 to 22 usually. A little, some guys a little older, but I think the toughest thing is just now we're gaining money and not having the financial education all the time or, you know, having to pay taxes. You know, yeah. those type of things are, are important and saving your money is important. So I think that's the toughest thing. You know, you give young guys a lot of money and some guys may or may not know how to um, handle that. But that's the toughest thing, I think. Yeah, I mean, I saw, um, I think it was Lou Williams who played in the NFL, I mean, NFL, NBA, and he was on a podcast recently talking about, like, even NBA players, right, that mm-hmm. are making supposedly millions of dollars. And he was going through it saying agent fee, you know, taxes, this and that, girlfriend, <laughs> girlfriend he mentioned, you know, yeah. like different things like that and just going, man, you're, you're not doing as well as you think. And he was able to mi- list, like, a lot of guys are not doing well financially, you know, because they don't save. Like, they right. feel that pressure to spend. So important stuff to, to do. Yeah, man. Sure. Well, my mom, my mother helps me with that. Lot, so shout out to <laughs> That's mom. That's good. That's good. Uh, she she really, really helps me keep yeah. track of my money. So yeah. I appreciate her for that. We'll uh, come back and wrap up today's edition of the Garden Trust Hour, which could be right from Gamecock men's basketball coming up here on the game.
Welcome back in. It is the Garnet Trust Hour. Tyler Head, Chris Clark, along with you. A few more minutes hanging out. What you cover right from Gamecock men's basketball. We've talked plenty about stuff on the court. Let's get to know Jacoby a little bit off the court. We always got to talk about food <laughs> here on the Garnet Trust Hour. When you're not having to worry about your diet and nutrition for a season, what do you like? What do you like to eat? I'm a big breakfast guy, so I eat a lot of breakfast food. Uh, I like Kiki's chicken and waffles. Uh, just places like that where I can go get broken egg. Uh, yeah, I just like breakfast food, French toast, uh, pancakes, eggs, bacon. Uh, and I'm a milkshake guy as well. Okay. I really like milkshakes, Ooh. Oreo milkshakes. Uh, yeah, different flavors, but yeah. So, you, so you're a, a brunch guy? Like you like brunch? Yeah. Or, or are you just straight breakfast at any time? Like, I could eat breakfast all day. Brenner? Like, yeah. you eat breakfast at dinner time? I could do that, yeah. too. Yep. I, I mean, I, I like that. That's one of the best meals. Sometimes you're just like, man, I don't have any ideas for dinner. Let's make some eggs yeah. and pancakes. And That's stuff. how like, I am. Yeah. I love it. Eating pancakes at 5 o'clock may feel <laughs> a little bit weird, but it's good. It's You'd good, be ready man. to go to bed after that. That's yeah. for sure. And so we were talking about you like you like play video games. What's your um, – so 2K, this is always controversial. Um, best 2K player on the team? Is it you? Is it somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> Me or uh, I give Talon Cooper credit. He's pretty good. I think he was the one that told us, like, I feel, I don't, first of all, I feel like everybody says they're the best, mm -hmm. you know. Um, everybody's got, I guess y'all play with confidence on the court and in 2K because everybody thinks that they're the best. But I think Talon's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm the goat. I, like, I'm the best. If I didn't say me, I would say him. Talon's the best at 2K. Now, have you guys had like an in, like a, any kind of formal tournament within the team <laughs> to determine this, or is it just a lot of one on ones? Uh, we've played each other a little bit, and there's different game modes on there that you can play. But uh, Talon's beat a few people. I beat a few people myself too, <laughs> but I've never played him in just a regular game of 2K team against team. So I might have to do that just to see where I'm at. What's your go-to team on 2K? Mm. I like to use the Timberwolves because they got two big men. Okay. And I, I'm good with those on 2K. They got Carl Anthony Towns and Gobert and then Anthony Edwards as well. And I don't know. The Lakers are pretty good to use. I like the Lakers too. Yeah. You going to play with Gigi Jackson? That would be kind of fun. Yeah, I might need to do that too. Yeah. John Morant really good on there too. So oh. I could use John and Gigi. I might can make some damage happen. Yeah. No, nah, no doubt. Um, did you see that the Gamecock football team did a little, I guess it was a three-on-three -three tournament? I saw that. Do you I, see do you see anybody that look a little bit nice or you just like nah not really i just saw a Kinda few rough. highlights i talked to a few of them uh <laughs> when i see him like Vershawn, uh and kai i heard his team was pretty kai good won. yeah his i saw team his won. team won. I, I got to talk to him the other day so yeah i would just say kai's team i heard they had a few guys that was doing pretty good like, they um, used to actually play basketball too yeah i mean tonka tj sanders is apparently tonka really too. good yep. yeah tonka's good but you know that's another one like most people say that they're really good. Spencer Rattler was actually really good at yeah. basketball. You can go look up his his highlight tape. He was really good. You see a lot of football guys, and you, they like they just have the natural athleticism. That's right. So that's the first part of it. But well, Kai, Kai is one like he's literally he's one of those guys that almost annoying because they're good at everything. Like yeah. he's apparently the best golfer on the team. His his team won the basketball tournament. He can throw the ball yeah. right. I mean it's. He can obviously punt, so it's crazy. Do you get out to any um, football games? Like, oh yeah, kind of, yeah. I definitely. I've been to a good amount since I've been in my three years, but I went uh, pretty much all the home games. I try to at least if I'm here, and it's, it's fun, great experience. I love going. Mm -hmm. Get to go on the field sometimes. So yeah, so it's fun. if you had to join the football team, what position are you playing? Wide receiver for sure. Okay. Uh, I, I don't no think hesitation. I could do running back. Uh, no, running, hey. running to them big guys like that. I'm gonna just hey. stay on the outside. L run my route. Listen, you're you're what six foot two, right? Yeah. We've been talking about they need a little bit more size at wide receiver. Uh -huh. Maybe well, final careful. year. Coach uh, Coach Beamer tagged me on Twitter one time. I did a <laughs> I had a clip when we we do our conditioning in the yeah. indoor stadium. So I, I went deep, caught a pass. He told me I could suit up. So I'm gonna hold him to his word. I need a hey, jersey this year. Get on out there. Coach there you Beamer. go. Yeah. Forget about the transfer portal. We got a guy right here. Yeah. yeah. Coach I mean, Beamer, come talk to me, man. I just saw him yesterday. So, yeah. yeah he's, um, now, co there was a clip of Coach Paris at football practice, too. And Mike Yuva from Gamecock Central asked people on Twitter, like, what would what would Lamont play? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Position wise? What's football. Mm. Whatever is a good IQ position. See, Maybe that's quarterback, I guess. Probably quarterback. I'd give him oh, quarterback. Yeah, see, I, I didn't think of that. I like that. Uh, 
Maybe, so, maybe safety or quarterback. I maybe like know. linebacker, kind of the quarterback of the defense. Yeah, he could do that too. Yeah. Any, any position like that. And I'm gonna got, give him quarterback though. He's got enough size. Like he's got the size, like yeah. to to play multiple positions. At first, I thought DB, but then I was thinking, I'm like Lamont's like a smooth guy. Yeah. Like I feel like he would be a really savvy like route runner. Mm-hmm. So I said receiver. That's, that's where. That's I not a bad choice him. either. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's me. How many quarter zips do you own? <laughs> I think I, I think they give us some every year, so I probably got about six or seven. Did I don't see, wear them too often. Did you see Lamont did the quarter zip with the, the suit? suit? The blazer a over lot it. of people sent me that. <laughs> I didn't know how to feel about do you, that. Do you think Do you think he did that just to be funny, or did he, was he like, "This is a fit," you know, like this? Man, works. it honestly didn't look that bad. So, <laughs> hey, hey, keep doing works. what you do. I, I yeah. love I love the fact that he embraces it at exactly. the end of the day. That'll do it for today's edition of the Garn Trust Tower. Jacoby, appreciate you hanging out with us, man. and uh, certainly wish you and your team the best of luck this upcoming season appreciate as well. Appreciate y'all. Shout out Game Cognition, man. Thank you for having me. All right, coming up next is the Game Cog Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs here on the game. Let's tell you about one of our great supporters here on the show, and that is our friends at Classic Roofing, Joe Reeder and Max Sawyer. They are both longtime residents of the Palmetto State and have families who live right here in the community. Classic Roofing does residential and commercial roofing, serving Columbia, South Carolina, and the surrounding areas. 803-590-7870 is how you can get in touch with them. Or go to ClassicRoofingSC.com for more info on their services and to get a completely free estimate. Again, at your home or at your business, they do residential or commercial roofing. With a wealth of experience spanning more than 20 years, their team of experts is well-equipped to handle all of your roofing requirements. The mission simple, provide you with top-notch roofing solutions that protect your property and enhance its curb appeal. ClassicRoofingSC.com.